Welcome to our first spring workshop titled Ditch Your Debt and Transform Your Net Worth. I'm Dr. Susan Madsen, founding director of the Utah Women in Leadership Project and also the Karen Haid Huntsman Endowed Professor of Leadership in the John M. Huntsman School of Business at Utah State University. And I'm the host of the workshop today. And this event furthers the mission of the Utah Women in Leadership Project, which is to strengthen the impact of Utah girls and women. We serve Utah and its residents by first, producing relevant, trustworthy, and applicable research. Second, creating and gathering valuable resources. And then finally, convening trainings and events that inform, inspire, and ignite growth and change for all Utahns, including this one. So would like to thank our sponsors, the Utah Education Network, the John M. Huntsman School of Business, USU Extension, and Empowering Financial Wellness, which is part of USU Extension as well, for making this event possible. And I would love to introduce Melanie D. Jukes, who is an extension professor with Utah State University based, she is based in Salt Lake County, and she earned both a bachelor's and master's degree in family finance. With 15 years experience in community educational programs, she oversees programs in family finance, nutrition, and food preservation. She directs the USU Extension's HUD and USDA Rural Housing approved online home buyer education course and the Power Pay program. Melanie successfully see, received more than 5.5 million in grant funding and has been awarded numerous national, regional, and state awards for her efforts in improving the lives of people here in the state of Utah. She loves good dark chocolate, I love that, hiking with her husband and four kiddos and plans to hike in all the national parks. Um, so uh, that's a little introduction and you are welcome to send notes. We'll have some time at the end and, and who knows in the middle possibly, we'll see how the flow goes and, and when Melanie would like to take questions, but definitely put some questions either in the chat, I'll be watching those or in the Q and A, I'll watch both of those. So thanks Melanie for being here today. I'll turn off my camera and turn it over to you and just appreciate your expertise and, and uh, welcome to all of those who are joining. Thank you. Thanks so much, Susan, and welcome everyone. I'm happy to be with you today to share some of my favorite tips for ditching debt and transforming your net worth. As an extension professor with Utah State University, my job is to help educate the populace in a goal to keep our communities thriving. So I work in a county setting and not on campus teaching students. And I currently work with the Empowering Financial Wellness team from USU Extension. And a couple of them have presented in this forum previously with other money smart tips that I hope you were able to see or you could access um, later. So in this presentation, I will be discussing four main points, including the definition of net worth, what it is exactly, how to calculate yours, and how women's net worth compares to men's. We'll talk about the benefits of wealth. Of course, money can't really buy a bottle of happiness, but it can provide other benefits. Number three, the opportunity cost of debt. Debt is holding you back from greatness, and we will talk about that. And four, lastly, We'll talk about proven research-based strategies to ditch debt based on best practices that will help you succeed in those plans. So even if you personally don't have debt or are near to being debt-free, I encourage you to listen and share what you've learned that can empower others. More positive discussions around money can really make a difference in our communities. So in the simplest terms, net worth is wealth. When we think of wealth, we often think of money or what money can buy. We might conjure up an image of a big, beautiful estate or a luxury car, but wealth is really the total value of possessions, including money, and not actually based on how we spend our money. And wealth is actually something that can be measured and calculated, which makes it a great way to measure the strides you're making in improving and growing your personal finances. So the formula, for measuring net worth is assets minus liabilities, and that will equal your net worth. So assets are things like cash, the amount of funds you have in checking and savings accounts, investment values, property values, basically everything you own in a snapshot of time. Liabilities are debt, including debts like 
bills that are owed or due, credit or store card balances, student loans, any family loans or friend loans, mortgages. Basically, it's everything you owe. And net worth is another term for the value of what you own. Now, remember, of course, that is not the value of who you are. We define that in a variety of important ways. And today I'm focusing on money, particularly a few steps we can take to build wealth. So why do we value wealth, especially when we know that we as women are more than the balance of our savings account and the value of our possessions? Wealth can help women to be more resilient to unexpected shocks. It can help women to be more prepared for retirement and to live more fully longer and to help children achieve upward economic mobility. So why do women need to care about wealth? I mean, these are great benefits, right? But why am I focusing so much on women instead of men or just all people? Of course, all people can benefit from wealth, yes. But let's take a look at reasons why I'm focusing on fostering wealth growth for women. So in previous presentations through the Utah Women in Leadership Project, you, you might have already seen these statistics discussing the disparities of women and money. So just a brief review, wage gap in Utah spe um, specifically, women are earning 30% less than men. So when a man earns a dollar, the woman's on average earning 70 cents. Nationally, it's 17% less. So when a man is earning a dollar, a woman is earning 83 cents. Uh, that's not so cool, right? Caregiving. Women are more likely to pause careers to care for children, their own children, and or elders. And women typically live longer than men. In Utah, females, the life, ex the life expectancy is a little over 80 years. And for males, it's just a little over 77. So the main point is we as women need to be more intentional about our money and building wealth and how we use our money. Women are already in a challenging position. As we see on the screen, we make less, we are more likely to step away from our earnings and we live longer than men as a whole. It's even more important for women to build wealth to support and compensate for these differences. Let's take a deeper dive into wealth of women compared to men. So this bar chart was created with data from the Survey of Consumer Finances in 2021, and it shows how far below in percentage terms that females' medium family wealth was compared to males, men's wealth. So when looking at all women in this far left column here, this is when it says raw, it's looking at like all women compared to all men in the study. And wealth is only 55 cents for every dollar of men's wealth. Now this model builds upon each other such that each bar includes all variables to the left. So for example, here in education, this bar represents the model in which gender, age, marital status, children at home, the presence of children at home, race and ethnicity and education are used to predict net, wealth, net worth. So in other words, they are evening out the data to compensate for each other. For example, when looking at men who have all similar characteristics, how does this data change? So this would be this far one here. So adjusting for all other individual and family characteristics, it did decrease this wealth gap by 36 percentage points. But the median among female representative, or respondents pardon me, was still significant their median wealth was 9% less than the median family wealth among male participants or 91 cents for every dollar. Now that's a lot better than 55%, but it is still st significantly, statistically significant and concerning. So why? You might think income might be the biggest factor to wealth, which intuitively makes sense. The more you make, the more you save and invest, right? But actually, that's not what models show. Models show that when you make more, you spend more. But that doesn't calculate either here with wealth because then if men made more and spend more, why would they have more wealth? So it's not just income that affects wealth when comparing men to women specifically. There are many factors that impact wealth, including age, relationship or marital status, the presence of children at home, race and ethnicity, educational attainment, 
income and employment status, home ownership, receiving an inheritance, and financial risk preference. Among all the relationship status groups, for example, the strongest associations with wealth are age, income, and home ownership. And all three of these things take time. So without spending too much time on this, I really want to show you how the data varies widely by marital or I like to say relationship status. So these colorful charts here on the left side are groups of never married. The, this next one is divorced, separated, or widowed. And then we have partnered. And then we have married. And you can just see the same characteristics we looked at in that blue bar chart a couple slides ago are represented in all these different colors. But look at these wide discrepancies between each of these groups. The ebbs and flows in those colors are just so staggering. So never married families experience the largest gender wealth gap for both the raw model that's looking at just all men and all women who are never married and the adjusted model accounting for all other characteristics. So the raw gender wealth gap among never married respondents was 34 cents for every dollar. Including the full set of individual characteristics, age, children at home, race and ethnicity, education, income, home ownership, you know, all those things listed. Uh, it does reduce the gap to 71 cents for every dollar. But I don't know about you, but I'm still not satisfied with that. <laughs> After accounting for the full set of family and individual characteristics among these relationship status groups, the gaps were reduced the most when we looked at married women um, adjusting for age, children at home, race, ethnicity, home ownership, employment status, et cetera. And that did get down to 96 cents for every dollar, the closest we've gotten, but that is still remaining statistically significant, meaning, um, you know, we might think $96 is pretty much, or 96 cents is pretty much a dollar, it's close, but statistically there's still a, dis a discrepancy there, a disparity. So, okay, some of that's kind of heavy and not the greatest to dwell on. So let me switch gears here and tell you a quick story. So this is me a little less than two months ago near the top of Mount Olympus, which is one of the most prominent peaks accessed in the central Salt Lake Valley. So I've hiked the same trail a few times, but this was my first time in the snow. My husband has a 360 degree camera that sometimes makes the angles of photos look steeper than they are, but here it's real. <laughs> Do you see the slant of my foot right here? Um, it's a steep hike. And let me show you what the elevation gain is for this. So in this chart, you can see mileage along the bottom here, zero to almost seven miles. This hike is about 6.6 .6 miles round trip. And on the side going up, you have the elevation. So this hike starts right here where it's grayed at about 4,500 feet, just kind of just right off the valley off of Wasatch uh, Boulevard. And the peak is way up here at 9,026 feet. Those 26 feet are being mentioned because I felt every inch of them. So in the first mile, you can see here this shaded gray right here in this first little cell. Um, it gains about 1,000 feet in a mile. And the second also gains about 1,000 feet. Then the third mile, it gains about 1,700 feet in elevation. And that very last, about thir a third of, the, of a mile, gains about 800 feet in a third of a mile. So for comparison's sake, I just wanna show you Donut Falls. This is a popular family-friendly hike near the top of Co Big Cottonwood Canyon. Maybe some of you have hiked it. We usually hike this as a family a couple times a year because my little toddlers and preschoolers can easily walk it without too many complaints. And it's a refreshing way to beat the summer heat. So this hike is only about 1.5 mile round trip. So about a quarter, three quarter of a mile there and three quarter mile back. In the first 0.2 mile, you gain about 200 feet. And then you stay kind of steady. And the last meh, 0.2, you gain another 200 feet if you're climbing up to the actual donut hole part of the waterfall namesake. Pretty easy peasy. Back to Olympus. So as you can guess, this is a hard hike. This hike is no joke. It's a quad wrenching climb of nearly 4,800 feet in an in elevation in about 3.3 miles. So my husband actually does this multiple times 
a week usually in the winter. He's a trail runner and a mountaineer, and it's easy to get to this peak without worrying too much about skiing traffic up the canyon, for example, or being out past dark in our shorter winter daylight days. He asked me to join him many times, and I always laugh. <laughs> this hike is hard without the snow, but on this beautiful day, beautiful Saturday in January, I finally decided to join him. Okay, I'm going to interrupt my storytelling. We'll come back to it to share some more grim news with you. So Americans are carrying a lot of debt. Um, on average, an American carries about $6,000 in credit card debt. That was up from a little over 5,000 in 2021, largely due to inflation. It keeps increasing. Um, the average American has about $96,000, including all debt that is carried. And 66% of student loan balances are, is carried by women specifically. And, and then again, remember that women earn less than men. As a whole, Americans are spending about 9.6%, almost 10% of their disposable income on debt repayment. And it's getting worse. Inflation has been a major player in making that worse. It costs us more to use debt as interest rates are rising. That means interest rate of our loans are higher and therefore more expensive for us to borrow. And debt default, meaning the let pay, late payments, is at an all-time high. As a whole, or sorry, in addition, research is showing that debt is one of the three main factors that get in the way of us accomplishing our financial goals. So let's dream for a second about what we could do if our money wasn't being used to pay debt. So I encourage you to grab a piece of paper, look around if you've got a sticky note, a notebook, even just a scrap paper that you can keep. Um, maybe you have a planner you could open up or open a note on your phone. But I'd like you to jot down, what would you do if you didn't have any debt payments to worry about? What are some things that come to mind? Would you travel more? Would you just relish in feeling amazing? Would you jump into a hobby or maybe start a new hobby? Would you put more toward retirement? Would you give more to others? Would you go back to school? There's so many options. I'll give you just a couple of seconds to jot down the first things that come to your mind. What would you do if you didn't have debt payments to worry about? I'm thinking I'd feel a lot like this girl on the suitcases. <laughs> Lots of fun adventures ahead of me. So what you listed on this piece of paper in your note is the opportunity cost of you carrying debt. So opportunity cost is the loss of a potential gain pardon me, for other alternatives when you choose one alternative. So have any of you seen La La Land? I feel that this is one of the best definitions of opportunity cost in the ending of this movie. It might have made some of you upset. I know when it came out a few years ago, there was like a lot of rumbles. People hated the ending. But we see Mia and Sebastian's opportunity cost of their choices. We saw what they lost by choosing the other alternative. We also saw what they gained, but more research, particularly about debt and opportunity costs are being explored in behavioral economics. It's fascinating. I would encourage you to check out a book called Dollars and Cents, How We Misthink Money and How to Spend Smarter. And I'll make sure that in the notes that Susan sends out that this would be included as a book recommendation. It's really quite fascinating. Debt is the loss of the list of dreams you wrote, but it doesn't have to stay that way. And debt is one thing that is likely more in our control than the wage gap, or at least more easily right now, and those other stats and disparities that I discussed earlier. So while there's much to be done, reducing debt will always increase your wealth. That's the best news of today. Yay! Reducing debt will always increase wealth. So how? So think back to our formula of wealth. Assets minus liabilities equals wealth. When we pay off a liability, it increases our net worth. Every dollar paying off debt brings your net worth balance up. So to be sure we're on the same page, I want to state that debt has a purpose. 
and I am not anti-debt. I too have benefited from my ability to access and use debt. There are many good reasons to have debt and ways to use debt to help achieve life goals and to help in certain life situations. But often it is overused. Sometimes the overuse leads to crushing situations when life brings us unexpected challenges. It's always best to have lower levels of debt, an emergency fund, and funds towards your future retirement than to be stuck paying for last year's Halloween party, Halloween pizza party. So back to my Olympus story. This hike took a lot of effort. You don't, you, or you can see that I don't have a coat on because I didn't need it. <laughs> Not because of the weather, I mean, it was cold, but because of the effort I was making. My body was working hard and kept me warm, but I did need other things. I needed good traction. I needed gloves. The poles helped to keep me steady on slippery parts, particularly on the way down, and especially on this last 800-foot climb up the steepest parts. Um, I needed water and food to replenish the calories that I was burning, and sunglasses, particularly because of the blinding snow. I could have probably made the hike without these things. And in fact, when I've climbed it in the spring or summer, I don't usually have all of those things. But they made a huge difference in my confidence and my comfort. The rest of this presentation will go over the tools you need to make it a debt elimination plan to be successful for you, to help you build wealth and reach those dreams you have. And yes, you can probably get out of debt without them, but these will boost your confidence and comfort while doing so. Fortunately, there's an amazing tool available for free to help you, your loved ones, and those you know who have debt. It is an easy tool that can help you reimagine your financial situation so you can feel more empowered about your financial future. It's called PowerPay. So what is PowerPay? PowerPay is a tool, web-based tool, that specifically helps debtors. It was created with the person carrying debt in mind. It's not a business. It's not an opportunity to sell loans. Um, it's really to help the person carrying the debt make a plan for them. How it does it is by calculating debt payoff. It does the math for you. It shows real numbers to help you visualize um, your payoff time and help motivate you. And it saves time and money. It has a built-in principle of snowball or avalanche methods, and that can save you thousands of dollars and years of payoff. So we had a participant in from some of our classes in 2021, and she wrote us her success using PowerPay. So she said, I am proud to say that because of the financial wellness classes and the PowerPay tool, we were able to budget better to purchase a vehicle that we could actually afford and have savings and play money. In the last year, so in one year, since she took the class and wrote us the story, they were able to knock down more than $10,000 in unsecured debt. They made a Christmas fund and were able to buy presents for every member of their family, plus birthday presents. They said, in past years, we've been so broke that we didn't have, we didn't buy presents for anyone. They were also able to set up several savings accounts for birthdays, car registration, a family member's wedding that was coming up, and an end of year vacation. They were able to have play money to go on trips, whereas in past they really couldn't go anywhere without getting into debt. And they have saved money to do fun things. Isn't that amazing? I just, every time I read that, I feel so excited for this person that they were able to not just pay off debt but to get a plan in place for all of these amazing life goals they have and a system to compensate for um, future unexpected expenses that come up. I hope you can all find such joy and accomplish such things with your money too by getting out of debt. So let's talk a little bit more about what is PowerPay. It was created 30 years ago. This is actually the 30th anniversary this year. In 1993 by Dean Miner. He was a Utah State University Extension faculty based in Utah County. And it was in direct response to a young adult who came up to him and asked him for help getting out of the multiple debts he had. So original PowerPay was created on a super calc spreadsheet and then sold on disks. Some of you may know what that means, but I'm actually too young to have any memory of SuperCalc. But from what I understand, it's basically an earlier version of Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> I do remember disks, though. That was, that, was my, that was in my lifetime. It was moved to CDs and then to a website in 2005. And it was updated with new features in 2018. It's essentially a web app 
a website that calculates debt payoff timelines. It is based on a principle called these rollover payments that are named power payments. So um, how this works is as soon as you pay off one debt, you roll over that amount to another debt. So as you can see in this example, this person might have three different debts, a credit card, car loan, maybe a student loan. And in this instance, the credit card has a lower balance. When that credit card is paid off, instead of just taking that fund, you know, that money, that payment and using it for whatever you'd like, you're applying it to the next loan. In this case, it's the car loan. And then once the car loan is paid off, which will be paid off faster because you're adding what used to be your credit card payment to your car payment. Once that is paid off, you add it to your student loans. So now what used to be your credit card payment and your, your car loan payment is being added to your student loan payment. And that is called a power payment or sometimes a rollover payment. And that's the whole premise of PowerPay. And it does that calculation for you. So let's just show you an example of that, how this works. Here is the makeup of Shelly's debt. Shelly owes a total of $43,500 in debt and pays $1,135 every month. And the breakdown you can see on the screen, credit card, a couple of credit cards, a hospital bill, a car loan. And this actually information right here on the screen is all you need to get ready and set up in PowerPay. The name, the balance of your debt, and the interest rates, as well as the minimum monthly payment. It does need to be at least the minimum monthly payment, um, because if you're not making the minimum, then you'll never actually catch up to interest and it would kind of be this infinite payoff time and couldn't be calculated. So it would need to be the minimum payment. So when Shelly's payment or um, debt information is entered into PowerPay, it will give us a debt payoff time assuming only minimum payments are made. So for Shelly, for her $43,500 of debt, it would take her nine years and one month to pay off the debt making only the minimum payment. And once the debt is paid off, she's now taking that money and putting it somewhere else. So this next screen will show you um, what her timeline would be if she applies the power payment and keeps putting that $1,135 that she's making in these debt payments to another debt. So using the power pay method, it would decrease it to three years and 10 months. So did you catch that? So nine years and one month, if she was just paying one off at a time and running off with the money. But if she kept that together, it decreases it to three years and 10 months. In addition, so before she's going to end up paying $58,381 in total debt. She only owed $43,500, but because of what she's paying in interest, it ends up being a, a total of $58,000. And you can see here, it's almost 15,000. That's just an in interest. When you shorten the payoff timeline, you also shorten how much, you also decrease how much is being paid in interest. So instead of 58,000, um, or yeah, it's 51,000, which is saving about $7,000 in interest. So not only are you saving time, but you're saving money as well. I love to see these numbers. It's a really simple principle, but the numbers really help to tell the story and are a big motivator. Nine years and a month seems like forever away, but three years and 10 months is definitely within a, a range of experience and our memory. My husband always jokes he has a three-year memory. That's within that timeline, right? Like we can stay focused. We, we can do that more easily. It seems more doable. So before I dive into PowerPay and actually show you how it works, again, it's a free program. I just want to review with you what you or any PowerPay user would need to get these calculations. So the first is to gather the debt information that you need. So you need um, the total debt owed on you know, each debt, the interest rate, and the minimum payment. And you can decide and commit to which debts you want to put into PowerPay. For example, um, some people don't like to include a mortgage in there. They just want to do like their consumer debt, student loans and credit cards, but that's totally up to you to decide what to put in there. The next step is to create a free account at powerpay.org and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and then after logging in, you'd be taken to the page where you can create a profile or multiple profiles if you wanted to create different scenarios for yourself, or maybe you're going to help out somebody and, and show them how it works for their situation. And then the third is after you click 
on create a profile you'll be taken to the creditor information page which is where you'll actually enter the debt information and that's really all you're going to need to do to get started pretty simple so in order for power pay to work and for you to succeed in reducing debt there are four rules that apply and these are really just basically debt payoff best practices they're your tools for success so number one, the money, the total amount of money going toward the combined debt payments remains constant until all debts are paid in full. Now, if that ever changed, you can always go into power pay and make adjustments. But the example I showed you with Shelly, she kept that $1,135 constant for three years and 10 months to get that paid off. Number two, in order for the calculations and the benefits of any, any debt elimination program to work in your favor, you can't add any new debt. So you need to stop using debt. So for example, with a credit card, you would not be adding more to the balance. Number three, using these power payments is what actually makes the program so effective. So the power payment principle helps to save money and interest and get you out of debt sooner. So understanding that you're taking a payment of the credit card once it's paid off and adding it to the next one will, will help you to stick with the plan and be successful and choose and achieve all those life goals sooner. And then number four, you need to be sure to tell lenders when it's applicable that the extra amount you're paying above the minimum payment needs to be applied to the principal balance. Sometimes when you make a payment, it's default and will just happen. But other times, like in a car loan, for example, if you make more than the car payment, they usually just apply it to the next payment and sometimes just to interest. And that wouldn't help streamline it as quickly as if you were directly applying it to the principal payment. So in some instances, you need to tell the lenders, I am making an extra payment and I need you to apply this to principal. In a mortgage payment, for example, usually they, they have an option for you to check. If you're making an extra payment, they wanna know, is it going to interest? No. Is it going to principal? Yes. Is it going to escrow? No. Principal. That's where you wanna make sure that's the actual balance of the debt. Okay, let's go back to Shelly for a second. So power pay helps you determine options of debt pay down. It doesn't pay your bills for you. It's not a loan consolidation. It's really just a calculator so that you can compare options. So the default option will always be this highest interest rate first because that will almost always save you the most money and pay it off quickly. But there are other options too. Um, and PowerPay also has things like extra payments. So maybe you get a bonus at work or you have a tax refund or you got a new job and you're making some more money. You have the option and it's totally optional to say, hey, in addition to all my minimum payments, I wanna add another $150 a month or maybe 500 once a year from my tax return. Um, and that's, that's a feature too. You can also use an emergency fund calculator to say, okay, I don't have any emergency savings so if something unexpected and urgent happens, I'm gonna to have to charge it and go into debt for it. But this can show you that you can pay off debt and build emergency savings at the same time. And then it also has debt consolidation and loan deferrals. So if you are considering a debt consolidation, this feature can help you compare it to say, um, okay, it's gonna take Shelly three years and 10 months to use the power pay method. What if I go get a debt consolidation loan? How much money might I save? you might not at all, and it would it would show you the difference. And loan deferral, if any of you are carrying student loans, this is a great option right now, as all that's up in the air, um, but you know, have the options to say, I, or if you're currently a student and you haven't graduated yet, you can put it in there and say, you know, I don't have to pay this until, and then it won't be calculated into your loan payoff until then. So that's a great feature too. So let's give you an example with Shelly and the extra payments. So if, if Shelly takes $150 extra per month. Let's say she got a, a new job or a promotion. Um, so every month from here on out, she's gonna pay an, an additional $150. And by default, PowerPay will put that to your highest interest rate because that will save you the most money in interest. So instead of three years and 10 months, it decreases it to three years and eight months, or sorry, two months, saving eight months. And the payoff amount is 49,000 which means she's saving 9,000 in interest. It used to be 7,000. So by doing that, she's saving a couple thousand dollars in interest and getting done sooner. 
So that's just one example of how that can work. And of course, if this is you and you're playing with it, I actually, I use PowerPay often. Um, I have been debt free for years, except for my mortgage. And anytime like I get a tax refund, for example, I'm like, hmm, do I wanna pay it on my mortgage? Or do I wanna go on a vacation? <laughs> and I will use it um, to help me see how much money would I save? How many months does it actually cut off of my payoff time, et cetera. So it, it can be a great tool and you can change and add and delete the extra payments um, as needed to help you make those kind of decisions. So let's look at another example with the emergency fund. So in this example, Shelly could build an emergency fund of $1,000 in the first seven months of her debt payoff plan and still save money. So by using that feature in there, and she's like, I want $1,000. Um, so once her credit card, is, or I think in her case, it's her car loan that gets paid off first, then once that car loan's paid off, it goes into the emergency fund until she reaches $1,000. And in her case, it would be seven months and she still ends up saving, um, you know, almost $7,000 in interest compared to never making power payments at all. Now, these power pay calculations are kind of fun for us money nerds. I hope you're definitely seeing the potential of what your debt payoff uh, possibilities could be. Okay, so now I want to take you right into PowerPay. Give me just a second to pull that up. I wanna show you what it looks like and um, how to get in there. So how you go to PowerPay is, oh, I typed it in and it disappeared, powerpay.org. And it will reroute you to Extension's website because it was created by Utah State University. So you can log in right here. And you can also go over here on this far right side, if you'll notice this banner, this is the PowerPay Money Master online course, and you can apply for a fee waiver. That isn't necessarily like how to use PowerPay. It's more just designed for teaching money smarts in general, but we do have a fee waiver currently if you're interested in that. But where you'll wanna go for the PowerPay debt reduction tool is on this left side. You'll click on start now. And then new users will just fill this in. I am going to use our resource sign in right now to show you Shelly's example. And because I'm pulling up our resource username profile, um, there's a lot in there and it kind of takes a second to load. So we'll just twiddle our thumbs a little bit. I'll check chat while that's loading. Um, See if there's any questions that you have. Okay, there's a question way back when we were looking at wealth about um, women who inherit wealth from the death. Yeah, one of those bars actually included inheritance. So even, even compensating for women who receive inheritances, and that's one of the reasons why wealth did go down. And I, I will make sure that Susan sends out, okay, let's see the little circle of death right here. It's spinning, it's thinking. No. It won't be that long for you, I promise. Okay, um, I'll another, make sure. Oh, yeah, I can send that out for sure. But there was another question um, about consolidation loans and do you recommend those? Great question. So there is a consolidation feature in PowerPay. Oftentimes, in order for companies to offer them, they're making money off of them. So usually they'll they'll take all of your debts and then they'll maybe average your interest rates which means maybe the high high ones come down mm -hmm. but the ones that were low come up um and sometimes it just costs you more money in the long run but it has benefits and they they are a great tool sometimes um if it's you know i'm making one payment instead of 5 6 7 or more that's a lot easier for people to do. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. And there are there are consolidation loans through um, like financial counseling agencies sometimes that might be a little more safe and won't, they're not, you know, a, a business that's trying to make money on them. So it's definitely something to compare if you're looking into them. It's not a blanket yes or no. It mm -hmm. just kind of depends on your situation. So and this if you will keep, if you will keep up on um if you can keep up and, and get yourself to do it, it's probably you save money doing it yourself. If you don't want to deal with it or or you might lose it, it might be might be good to go a different route. So all right. right. 
It we looks have like you're all season. loaded. Okay, so your screen will look a little bit different since this is our teaching one. Um, I'm going to click on Shelly because that's who we've used as our example, just a pretend person. Um, when you come into PowerPay to get to this page, you'll click on PowerPay tab here and then PowerPay. And that would take you to this creditor information page. And a little secret. Um, I'm actually working with a web designer right now, and we have a whole new look coming. It's not here yet, but it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. So this is where you come in and you can edit, you know, the name of this, whatever it is, you type it in. And you type in the balance and you type in the payment and you type in the interest rate. And it will tell you right here as you're calculating how long it will take to pay that loan off just by itself. So you enter each one of those debts you have. Um, and by doing so, you just add a new one and you'll hit save. And then right below, it will show you these results without making power payments. So again, that's when one debt is paid off, you're just taking that money and doing whatever you want with it. But then to see the power payments, you click on the payment calendar. And this is a great tool. It shows you this options comparison. All the examples I showed you of Shelly were highest interest first. That's going to save you the most because any extra freed money you have is going to the one with the highest interest rate. So there's less of a balance being charged the interest. So it saves you the most. But in this instance, you can see how they're calculated and the short term first is still the same payoff time. But let's use this example here. This is the shortest term first. So in this example, we know the balance usually is kind of the shortest term first. Um, that's where the extra money gets paid. And you can see here, it's like $500, a little less than $500 difference. Um, and most of that's going to interest. But in this instance, most of Shelly's options are similar. They won't always be that way. And it will just depend on your interest rates and your balances and the variety of those. And you can see without any power payments, it takes nine years. And then with these options, three years and 10 months with a little bit of variability in how much is totally paid or saved based on where that's going. Now that might be all jumbly, you know, but let me show you, if you scroll down, this is where it will show you an actual calendar and you can change your method here if you wanted to select shortest term. Lowest balance is kind of what's called the snowball method, if you've heard that before, where you just pay, you put all resources to the one with the lowest balance. And then it's like, woohoo, I paid off that dental bill for my cavity and it's gone. I don't have to worry about it anymore. On to my next one. And that can be really psychologically motivating to just kind of bam, 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 pay off those debts. Um, highest interest rates, however, will save you the most money, but you can toggle back and forth between those options. Down this side on the far left, you will see the month that payments are due and it will always do the next month. So we're in February right now. Um, so it's going to start with March. Tomorrow, if you put this in, it's going to have April as your first month. And it shows you the minimum payments that you have already entered into PowerPay of what needs to be paid. It will toll. So she had, what was Shelly? 43500 So after making payments in March, she's down to 42657 So it kind of shows you that. And this far, far side is her payment. So she's keeping that $1,135 consistent through the whole time. So for a while, it's going to look the same, maybe be a little boring, maybe not so fun. And look, ta-da, in July of 2024, her car payment is going to be almost done. This is the last payment, so it's a little less than $600. So the difference between the $600 and that little balance that was left gets added to the one with the highest interest rate, which was this first credit card. So that payment jumped up from $40 to $97. Shelly made sure that she put on the bill that was being applied to the principal balance of the credit card. And then in August, she has no car payment at all. It's completely paid off. So she took that $600 payment that was the car and applied it to the credit card with the highest interest rate, making sure to apply it to the principal balance. And then that credit card is paid off in three months, freeing up $640 to then throw on, what was this magic debt? The visa and so on and so forth until it's paid off. So by January 25, she's putting $1,100, $1,135 all on the big hospital bill she had 
and we'll work on that until it is done. So that's how this works. Let me just quickly show you that shortest term first and see how that differed. So again, I just scroll down again. Um, it reorders them based on the shortest term. The first one to be paid off is still the car, but instead of applying that to the credit card, I am now taking that $600 and applying it to um, right here. This, oh, it, it did go to the visa, but then after that, it goes to a different one. So you can just see there's just a little nuance difference and you can play with that to see. And then this, you can download, you can print, and you could actually like tape it in your office or your fridge or whatever's most motivating. You can like cross off, done. I paid March and I used, you know, these calculations. Let me also show you how you would enter extra payments. So I'm actually going to go back to um, the profile and select Shelly with extra payments because we've already done that. Whoops, wrong one. I clicked on emergency fund. Okay, so extra payments is just right here next to creditor information. And you can say, okay, she's going to take $1,700 of her tax refund just in 2023. And maybe she just got a new job. She's going to have $1,500 every month. And you can delete these. You can change it. If something comes up, a different opportunity, an emergency expense, you know, maybe I decide actually I'm not going to take that $1,700 of tax refund and apply it. You could just make that delete there and take it off. You have the option of doing a one time only every year, twice a year, four times a year, or monthly. Those are your options for extra payments. You'll save that information and then click on payment calendar. And we'll just quickly look at how that is different. So in March, remember, she's doing an extra $1,700 that got applied to the highest interest rate. So the credit card ends up becoming the first one paid off because of that, instead of what we saw earlier with the car loan. So again, this payment calendar just helps you to structure and know where what money's going. Um, and then let me just quickly show you the emergency fund option. Um, to get there, you click on power save. Whoops, I was wrong. Sorry, it's not power save. Calculator, nope, sorry. All of a sudden I am looking in the wrong spot. There it is, emergency fund <laughs> under power pay. <laughs> Um, and basically you would just say, I want 25% or you could name it, whatever. I want 100% of an available fund. So when credit card gets paid off, I want all of that. I'm expecting maybe a 3% return, which by the way, check your um, online bank accounts compared to your regular bank accounts. They have been increasing in interest lately. So if you've got an emergency fund, I would highly encourage an online savings account to earn that 3% so you can get a tiny bit of cash building that up. Anyway, that's how you would calculate it. And then the power, um, the payment calendar would show you that. I am running out of time to show you details, but that's the gist of it. And when you get in there, um, it will just walk you through um, how to enter it. And I'm always available to teach you more. So in just making sure, Susan, can you see Shelly on my screen again? Um, so in Shelly's debt-free journey, she owed $43,500. She was paying $1,135 a month and using PowerPay decreased that to three years and 10 months of payoff time. So in a little less than four years, Shelly will become $43,500 wealthier and she'll have an extra $1,135 per month to put towards anything her financial goals and dreams. Isn't that amazing? It's so cool to say and to total it up and say, wow, I can be $43,500 wealthier in three years and 10 months by using this power pay method and, and sticking to, to that. So getting out of debt may not be as easy as spending money. That's usually pretty easy, but PowerPay really can be an excellent tool to motivate you and help you create a personalized plan to your situation to become debt-free. And yes, there may be times you want to give up, 
um, but keep those dreams and wishes as your motivator. I mean, look at this view, right? Sometimes when we can just keep the view, the future in mind, um, it can really help. And remember that every dollar of debt you pay off increases your wealth by one dollar. And each dollar is worth the effort as you climb towards your financial goals and as you build your financial capacity. So if you're interested in learning more or you need assistance with PowerPay, feel free to contact me. My email is on the screen. You're welcome to reach out to me. We also have a new Instagram and Facebook page for PowerPay. It's like really new, like there's like two posts, but um, we'll keep you informed on ways to get out of debt and stay out of debt. And when we've got that new website launch and look and design. Um, we don't sell products with USU Extension necessarily. I mean, we're just here to provide education and motivation in your financial empowerment journey. Sometimes we have resources that we don't have that, you know, you might pay for a book or a handout or something like that. But um, otherwise, we're, we are here to just educate and motivate you. Thanks for joining today. So a couple of things. First of all, I love the way that that people now in, in your positions and others use the word wealth. Because when I grew up, wealth was just really people who had a lot of money, but but we're calling you know wealth for every everyday people now, right? I mean, have you seen that shift in the way we're using that word wealth? I think that's cool. Yeah, and I think it's so important too, especially when we're looking at income mobility and um being able to move out of poverty like yeah. and it is for everybody and it's not so much how you how much you earn it's really about prioritizing and being intentional about where you're putting what you earn and and the key again that you said is you can only do this if you don't keep building up more debt the 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 way that you're talking about it the, i mean the 3 years is so awesome you can see 3 years but if you're building up other debts as you're trying to pay others, then it, it, it's not magic like that, right? right? It does take effort and and everybody's situation will be different. I did actually have somebody contact me and they're like, something's wrong with PowerPay. It's not showing anything different. But as I looked at the debts they were entering and they were all student loans that had about the same balances and about the same interest rates. So they were all being paid off at the same time. There wasn't, there was never like a power payment to free up. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there might be instances where that would happen. And then the goal would be, you know, you've got to find that extra payment to add to it, to jumpstart and kickstart that payoff. And I, I have to say too, as I tried to get debt free through the years, I do love looking at how that interest each month goes down. It's just really cool. It, it feels freeing to to know that less is going on, you know, towards interest. So there's a couple of questions. Let me give you one. How do you deal with balances at an introductory 0% or low rate that end in a few months? So you sign up for something that has a zero. How do you um, kind of deal with that in the in the power play? Power yeah. pay, not play, that, power pay. That has been, a, that is a feature on power pay. And it is um, under, just double checking where it is. Um, in fact, I can quickly just show my screen real quickly. Um, you would click this tiny little box above the interest rate, and that would take you to a screen where you can adjust the interest rate and tell it for how long. So that works really well with a balance transfer on a credit card, for example. Um, and you just plug it in there. And it, it can be a little tricky sometimes. I mean, it's pretty straightforward if you follow, but if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me and the, the new version should make it easier as well. Oh, awesome. And there was a question a while back in one of the things that you were saying is um, about the consolidation loans and do those hurt um, credit scores? Yes, they oh. usually do. Okay. But being in default also hurts a credit score. <laughs> so, you know, if you can get those debts paid off, and then you're paying off a debt consolidation loan. And that's something a credit counselor could look at you, look more one-on-one -on -one with your certain circumstance, but remaining in default is not a good thing either. And you mentioned credit counselor. Um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people that do, you know, consulting and different things. Anything that you recommend, any resources that people, other than this, you know, that that people can can think of going to that they could trust? 
Yes. So on our staff with the Empowering Financial Wellness Team, we have a few accredited financial counselors through uh, the Association of Financial Counseling, um, which was created uh, about 30 years ago as well in connection with Extension statewide or nationally. Um, they, you can go to their website. I'll make sure to give Susan that so you can have it in notes and you can look up an accredited financial counselor um, near you or in your area. And um, also usually certified HUD counselors can help with that. Usually they're more helping people with mortgage default or buying a home, um, but they can be available too. And then, yeah, there's a few other agencies in the state that I'll make sure to put in the notes that are available. You do wanna be a little careful, verify you know, what their goal is, who, who they're being paid by, and yeah. make sure they're actually keeping the consumer in mind and they're not trying to you know, get money from selling you a product necessarily. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, for this wonderful presentation. And I also want to thank our sponsors, the Utah Education Network, which is UEN, the John M. Huntsman School of Business, USU Extension, and Empowering Financial Wellness, also with USU Extension, for making this event possible. So thanks again to Melanie for her wonderful presentation and for her team and the work that they do at USU Extension. Have a wonderful day.